Ciao and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush, where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. We're here on location in Munich, Germany to explore a fun work of public art by a contemporary American artist, Jonathan Borowski's Walking Man. Thanks for joining us. We had just two days in Munich this summer, one of which was spent touring the powerful International Memorial at Dachau concentration camp about 10 miles north of Germany's Bavarian capital. On the second day, after strolling the main pedestrian drag from Karlsplatz southeast to Marienplatz, the historic city center, we took a hop-on, hop-off bus tour of Munich, departing across from the Hauptbahnhof near our hotel. We elected the hop-off on Leopoldstrasse near the university and the historic Englischer Garden, where we intended to walk and enjoy lunch in the park. As the bus approached our stop, we could see from our vantage point on the top open-air deck a giant white figure on our left appearing in scale about the size of the buildings just behind it seemingly in motion strolling through some tall trees that line this section of Leopoldstrasse so after stepping off the bus and onto the sidewalk we headed back north a block or two on foot to investigate this rather strange sighting even before we learned that the artist was like us American Jonathan Borofsky, a Boston, Massachusetts native, known for his unique, oversized sculptures that seek to remind us of the universal, archetypal, enduring elements in human nature, we were intrigued by this work, which is at once fun, lighthearted, and interesting, even inspiring. The sculpture stands an imposing 56 feet tall, or 17 meters, at Leopoldstrasse 36, at the entrance to the Munich RE Insurance Company, which funded the piece. The inner structure is made of steel, while the outer shell, bathed in a simple pure white, is fiberglass. The piece weighs about 16 tons. According to the artist's own website, the work was constructed in sections in California and then shipped to Munich, where German workers spent more than a month assembling Walking Man. The interior of the upper body of Walking Man even contains a staircase used by workers to complete the assembly, now sealed off, along with a time capsule containing the written words of the workers and employees of the insurance firm too. What I love about this piece is the sense of purpose, of action, of determination it communicates. It's amazing to me that the most basic of human figures, human in shape only, without gender, facial expression, eyes, voice, clothing, any hint at profession or socioeconomic class, and completely out of proportion with a human scale, can so effectively capture the archetypal urge to move, to carry on, and to do so with purpose and energy and vigor. In fact, Borofsky's work here, stripped of all that could connect this human being to a specific time, place, or culture, is showing us how little those differences matter when it comes to the most essential elements of what it means to be human, a message I believe has immense relevance for us early in the 21st century, a message of connectedness, and a message, just in case we miss the point, delivered on a gigantic scale, indicating how much more powerful our common humanity is than the traits that seem, at least, to separate us. The basic, universal human urge to go forward, arms swinging, helping to propel us into the future, legs taking big, bold strides, purposeful, though not necessarily certain of what's ahead. It's the same urge that propelled the great European explorers of the 15th and 16th centuries to leave safety and comfort behind for new and unknown shores. Americans Lewis and Clark to journey cross-country to the Pacific Ocean and back. And today's astronauts from across the globe to fly 220 miles above the Earth to the International Space Station to conduct research for the benefit of all. It's the same urge, going back further, that enabled residents of today's continent of Africa to migrate north through Asia to the Bering Strait land bridge, and about 11,000 years ago, cross that bridge and begin to populate today's North and South America. Sure, there are often other factors that inspire movement in human beings, such as the need for food, threatening neighbors, or changes in climate. But I believe Borofsky has it right. There is clearly something universally human about the desire to go forward. 
Walking Man, and Borofsky as an artist who has explored other essentially human archetypes in works like Hammering Man in Seoul, South Korea, and Walking to the Sky in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, has been criticized as corporate, that is, producing corporate art with a corporate message funded at times, well, by corporations. To this end, the Munich RE Insurance website does interpret Walking Man, quote, as a symbol for a society geared to performance and dynamism. Nice try, but not so much, RE, since the whole point of the stripped-down, unrecognizable human figure seems to be that there are aspects of the human character that are independent of, beyond even, any particular society or culture. And there's really nothing in the sculpture that speaks to the company's notion of performance, suggesting high-quality, efficient labor of some type. But the fact that the corporation which funded Walking Man adopts a narrow, unfounded interpretation of the piece, one that fits snugly with its corporate culture, doesn't really say anything negative about the work itself. As far as I'm concerned, this sculpture stands on its own merits as a relevant work of art, and so does Borofsky as a contemporary artist. I mean, if the Coca-Cola Corporation chose to interpret Mona Lisa's smile as satisfaction following a sip of ice-cold soda on a steamy Tuscan afternoon in August, it says nothing about Leonardo's artistic skill and vision. And of course Borowski's work is viewed as relevant by corporate leaders. He's seeking to capture human archetypes, so the whole point is that everyone can see something of themselves in his sculptures. If anything, I think it's wonderful that RE Munich commissioned the piece and placed it where it can be explored and enjoyed by the public at large. Good public relations? Probably. But it's also good art. Eventually, Dana and I moved on from Walking Man, back down Leopoldstrasse and east into Englisher Garden, where we walked the old park, open to the public in 1789, and had lunch and cool beer in the small Hofbrau Beer Garden. We were enjoying such a sweet sunny day in Munich, a day that was made even more interesting, more enjoyable, by our unexpected encounter with an American artist's effort to remind humankind just how deeply we are connected by universal urges like the desire to go forward, to advance, to leave the cave. I don't think one can expect any more from large-scale public art than Borofsky delivers in Walking Man. Grazie mille. Like I could when I was small and it's so picturesque Looking through the crystal ball